Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to make a cross pipe. Um, C-R-O-S-S-P-I-P-E, in case you can't understand my hickey accent. Um, I learned this from a user on the Luxology forums. Um, the forums are great, and this user has a website, and he has quite a few videos. There's no audio, but he shows you how to do it by watching, and I can't remember the guy's name. I will update the description with the guy's name because I want to give him credit. He taught it to me. Now I want to teach it to my new Moto users, my viewers, because it's a really good little exercise to give you an idea of some or just a portion of the power of booleans, and it just kind of shows you how to mess with sub Ds and how to make it more sharp and true. It's just a good little exercise to go through. So this is what we're going to end up with right here. As you can see, it's just a regular old cross pipe. You know, top, bottom. So let's start. I'll tell you what, we're going to make a three-way because it's is a little more, can show you a little more what's going on. Let's get a new scene all together. Now we have our mesh over here, as you can see, our new scener, just like everything else. Now let's go make a tube or cylinder, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to give it eight sides in one segment, and I'm going to orient it this way this and I guess we could make it three meters by three meters like so now let me stretch it out here and let's get our pop pretty big large pop three meter pop wow but you know this demonstrates this this demonstrates the purposes we need okay now we have our pop here so let's get in the habit of renaming everything we'll name this pop one Say okay. Okay, let's go to our polygon mode, which we're in. Let's double click it and select the whole thing. And let's hit Command C or go up to Edit, Copy. Okay, now I want to go back over here to New Item and select Mesh. This will just like give me a new layer, so to speak. Then I'm going to hit Command V and paste what we copied. Now I have a copy of each my original pipe, and we'll name this one. Pop 2. So we got Pop 1 and Pop 2. So let's select, double click our Pop 2, hit the E key to bring up our rotation, and let's rotate it 90 degrees to make it straight up and down. Now, as you can see, our background mesh or our first pop is in the background. You can see the black wireframe. Okay, see there? Whichever one is selected is one showing, and the background is the black mesh. Okay, let's hit the space bar to drop the tool. Whenever this little icon you see here is, is up there, you know you got a tool active. Hit the space bar to drop the tool. Okay, now we have these two pops. So now we want them to interact with one another. So I'm going to select my first pop. I'm going to go to my Mesh Edit tab and select Boolean. Now under my Operation, I'm going to select Union, Cutting Mesh, Background, and I want to say OK. And bam. Here we have our cross pop. But as you can see, when we hit the tab key and go to sub D's, oh my God, what happened? A lot of people have been saying, man, I mean, I, I'm having problems with my topology and my geometry working right and being smooth in, with my sub D. When I'm doing polygons, everything looks fine. But when I go to sub D, it just screws all up. Well, that's because we got to define our edges and stuff. So first of all, let's just do a three-way pop, okay? I'm in polygon mode. I'm going to select all of these by shift clicking, rotating around and just clicking them all. Now I got all those selected. I'm going to don't forget the bottom one. And hit the delete key. Now there's two delete keys on the Macintosh full size keyboard. The delete key below the function key and the delete key that acts as a backspace. Okay. Which is beside the plus key. Um, so the delete key under the function key on the keyboard is the, is the absolute delete. If you hit something, see you later. It's gone. Okay. But if you hit the backspace key, like that right there, you, you it's possible that you're not going to leave every, you're not going to get everything. Did you, as you can see, I go to my vertices, and I've still left those points. Those points are still there because I hit the backspace key or the delete that acts as the backspace key. Okay. Now, if I hit the delete key under the function key, it gets rid of it. I go to vertices and try to select those again. They're not there. Okay. So keep that in mind. Very important. 
So let's go up here and let's close up our mesh, okay? Let's close up our geometry. We'll go to vertices mode. First, I'll select. First, make sure right here, select this vertice and go down here and look. It says you have two vertices. I don't want that. I just want one, okay? So since I have two there, that means something's not working. And I can tell that when I go into sub D by the way these corners look, that I have a vert right there and a vert right here that's not joined together, okay? So let's select those verts right there. We'll go to our vertex tab, select join averaged, okay? And that will join everything. Or not necessarily join average, you can also select join and click the average and just say okay. It will, they'll both work, okay? So let's go around to the other side and do the same thing. There's two verts there too. We're going to join those. Say okay. There they are. Okay, now we're good to go. Now as you can see, our topology here looks lots better. Those two verts ain't hanging out in space. But we still got a little bit of work to do. So let's take this edge, this, this vert, and this vert, and let's join them. Say okay. Actually, you'll want to join averaged. So they'll meet in the middle. You've seen what happened there when I didn't join the average. It kind of just went off to the side. So that's important too. Make sure you hit the right one or your topology will be messed up. So you can say join averaged or you can go join. Hit the average. Check marks and go OK. Now let's do our last one here. Join averaged. There we go. OK, but now we're not finished yet. I'm going to back out of this thing. And uh, see, it's still no, it's still not working. It looks like some kind of fucked up. Excuse my language, shoehorn. So um, let's, let me see here. What we're going to do is we need to add some geometry to this. So we're going to do that by adding some edge loops. So let's go to polygons, and let's select around through here. Let me zoom in so you can see this. I'm going to go to mesh edit, loop slice. I'm going to set it to count to two to symmetry. And I want to set these edges right at about 2% from the edge. Hit my space bar to drop the tool. Click the deselect. Now you can see I've got these edges in here. So let me go ahead and do it for this one too. We'll hit loop slice. It should be already set to 2% from the last position. I'm just going to click. There it is. Hit the space bar to drop the tool. Click the deselect. Now we have our geometry there. Let's do the same thing with this top one. Loop slice. Click. It should already have our 2% setting and it does. Space bar to drop the tool. Click to deselect everything. Now as you can see we have our geometry. Now let's work on our edges here. Let's select this one. Shift click this one. Shift click this one. Hit the B key to bevel it. Let's not be shy. Let's bevel it in quite a ways. So it'll be a good thick pop. Okay, there we go. So let's go ahead. Now that we've got that in, let's shift click again to reactivate the tool and let's pull our blue handle down and that'll bring our pipes in. And as you can see, there they are, right there in the middle, right there inside the pipe. What we're going to do is hit the space bar, drop the tool. Those will stay selected. Go up to edit, delete. And that'll get rid of those. Now, that should be about it. it. Might be a few finished touches to do. Let's hit the tab key. Now you can see we're holding our geometry. But I don't like how our edges are going on here. I don't I don't like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here and we're gonna add us another edge loop with the same settings. And look what that does for us. That gives us a nice flat edge there for our pop. Let's do it with this side, you'll be able to see it better. And there you go, so as you can see, we have a nice pipe. And you can also, you might want to go in and do it for the top one. You don't want to get lazy. And there we go. There's a quick, fast cross pipe using booleans and join vertices. And let's up the uh, subdivision a little bit there so we can get some more geometry. And there we go. We have a finished cross pipe. Go through this exercise a few times, and I'm telling you, it's good to get your beginning and get you started with how things work, how geometry works, and you know how booleans can work, and how your edge loop mainly works. Edge loop is really important in Modo. Um, 
there's a lot of different types of modelers. There's box modelers. There's, you know, some people like to sculpt more than model, actually. I'm more of an edge modeler. I like to use edge loops and bevels. Um, but it's all preference, however you like to do it. It's all in just your style of modeling. So, some people like NURBS modeling. It just, just depends on what you like. So, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.